All of these priorities will factor heavily into the NAFTA talks that kick off next month. Working out a beneficial agreement is crucially important to Canada, but newly elected Conservative Party leader Andrew Scheer says Ottawa may not be up to the task. Earlier, he explained why Trudeau's Liberals aren't ready for the talks and what trade would look like under a Conservative administration. Well, I'm quite concerned because I think first and foremost the Liberals have uh, really been asleep at the switch on a lot of these trade files. For example, softwood lumber. Uh, there isn't a, a possibility to get an extension to the softwood lumber agreement while President Obama was still in the White House during that much vaunted state dinner in Washington. And Justin Trudeau didn't bring his natural resource minister with him to that, that dinner. He brought his in-laws instead. So to me that was an early signal that he wasn't really engaged on some of these trade files and as the NAFTA um, issue evolves as we hear more and more from, from uh, President Trump, um, I'm not, I don't have confidence that, uh, that the PMO, that the Prime Minister, that his cabinet is fully engaged on these issues and it's so critical that Canada gets this right. What would you do differently? Well I think the key for trade with the United States is not, especially with, with someone like uh, President Trump, you know, who is making a lot of protectionist statements. It's not to go down and, and argue uh, the merits of free trade, uh, appealing to the goodness of their heart or asking them to do it out of friendship uh, because of, of our relationship with Canada. Uh, trade benefits both countries. There are you know, hundreds of thousands, uh, if not millions of Canadians who are employed because of uh, trade with the United States. But the same is true in the United States as well. I saw a, a recent poll that showed that uh, a majority of U.S. businesses feel that free trade with Canada is in their best interest, not because uh, they're not pro-free trade because it helps us, but it, it helps them. And I think the key for the government is to establish a network of alliances, of uh, a team in, in across sector, uh, across different sectors in different regions, putting pressure on U.S. lawmakers from within. So in other words, have American businesses who hire Americans who employ people in, in places like Pennsylvania and Ohio, uh, get them to go to Washington and say, hey look, if you shut down access to Canadian markets, if, if you put in tariffs on Canadian products coming in, these are the people I'll have to lay off in your state because we benefit from this trade. That I think they'll understand more than just uh, getting Adam Smith read to them uh, by Canadian uh, diplomats. So what do you say to the argument that, look, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau, uh, first foreign leader to speak at the National Governors Association, he's going around the feds, he's going state by state trying to engage with governors uh, one by one. W isn't that sort of aiming at the same uh, at the same approach that you just outlined? Well, I, I'm, I'm encouraged that it's happening now. I guess my, my major point is that it, it's they're coming late to the game, that this is really something that should have been uh, front, front and center for their whole government, waiting uh, for Trump to start uh, s s sending indications or waiting for position papers mm -hmm. or, or uh, tr trade standpoints. Mm -hmm. um, that, I think, it, it's too late. It's, it, it, in many areas, it's too late. So it's a good sign. I would have liked to have seen it about a year ago. And it's important to talk to U.S. lawmakers at the state level, but most importantly, it's important to talk to U.S. industry, U.S. businesses. Let's get the people in front of U.S. lawmakers who hire to 3,000 people uh, thanks to Canadian imports or who hire mm. three or 400 people thanks to the ability to sell into Canada. Though that's the message that if I'm a U.S. congressman, uh, I'll understand that. You know, I'll understand the importance of keeping that border open to goods and services because it employs people in my state. The same is true in Canada. We, we have, you know, like I said, uh, so many Canadians who have jobs because they make a product, or they work for a company that sells into the U.S. So the key message is that trade benefits both countries, but we need we need some help on the American side to put that pressure on American lawmakers. I know you're against free trade with China, is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. Where else should we be looking? Well, uh, as, as you mentioned, I believe that at this time a free trade deal with China would not be in Canada's best interest. Uh, they, they don't have the same uh, types of, uh, they don't have the same fundamental uh, economic uh, fundamentals as we do here. They have a lot of state-owned enterprises uh, not at the same level as, as Canada when it comes to environmental regulation, labor law, things like that. W there are some wonderful opportunities uh, around the world. First and foremost, with the United Kingdom working through how it's going to leave the European Union, that's a natural fit for Canada. We have the uh, same fundamental principles in our economy, we have the same rule of law, uh, same language, same head of state for heaven's sake, <laughs> you know, that, that would be low-hanging fruit. And but it's uh, also a population of just 65 million people compared to 1.3 billion in China. The opportunity is much, much smaller. Well, the, the opportunity, it's a very dynamic economy, even though it's a smaller population. It, it's a very dynamic economy with a very high uh, GDP. 
in Asia, there are a lot of uh, markets that we can enhance our trading relationship with. India comes to mind. Uh, the previous Conservative government did a lot of work laying the fundamentals uh, for enhanced trade there. Um, you know, by by f kind of allowing the TPP to, to to falter, the Liberals have missed an opportunity with some other uh, tr democratic and and trading nations in. In but Asia the, as well. so I mean, I would on, the, on the point about TPP allowing it to falter, is Donald Trump pulling out of the TPP something we should be blaming the Liberals for? In your no, view? but but I think th th there there is a lack of okay, picking up the ball and running with it. We could have played a leadership role. You don't have to have everyone in a trade deal to to make it work. Any trade deal between any uh, na two nations with with comparable levels of economic development uh, is is a good thing. And if the United States wants to forego the advantage advantages of that free trade deal, that doesn't mean that we should just turn, turn a blind eye to the entire region. So those are the areas that I would focus on. I would also focus on enhancing trade with China. There's a lot of opportunities there. I come from Saskatchewan. We export a lot of agricultural products. Uh, Western Canada exports a lot of natural resources. There's going to be a lot of things that the Chinese want to buy, and there's going to be a lot of things that we'll hope for investment. But a free trade deal that allows unfettered access to the Canadian economy without some of those fundamentals uh, reforms that I think are so necessary in China make it not in Canada's interest at this time to have that free trade deal.